This project was totally inspired by Lynn Brundage from Ellen J. Goods, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. But to begin with, I had to draw a sketch. So using graph paper, I created a house design that is seven inches wide each wall and 14 inches tall. Next, I taped down my pattern and cut it out of foam core board. My goal here is to create a paper mache house that I can then decorate. Uh, now Lynn used various stamps, which was absolutely gorgeous, and I want to use stamps as well, but I also want to use some decoupage paper. Now Ellen J. Goods does sell these houses. Uh, I think one set is three, like they, they nest together, a, st a stack of three different houses from small, medium to large. And then she sells another set that are two a um, little bit larger style houses. I just wanted one house and I wanted to see if I could possibly make my own paper mache house. So the base is foam core board. Now the first thing I did on the inside and outside of all my foam pieces was to brush on some Mod Podge and that was just to give it some grit. Um, to maybe help the product I'm going to use stick to the foam board because foam board is very slippery. If I were doing this again, I would probably mix in a little bit of sand in with the Mod Podge just to give it some more tooth. And additionally, I might throw in some paint, some tan or something paint because the product I mix is white and I'm putting it on white and it was pretty hard to see that I had the foam core covered everywhere. So if you try this, that's just a little tip. In the process of hot gluing this house together, you're going to notice that one side didn't go all the way to the peak. And I had already cut the thing, cut the windows and everything. I was like, I am not recutting this piece. And I didn't want to waste the foam core either. It's not going to show in the end. It's all going to be covered. So on the other end, I made it extra long to go over the peak and back down and glue to the other side of the roof. I ended up cutting it at the peak. Uh, I could just fit it together better that way. The first set of two walls, inside and out, I did off camera. I am going to show you the mix and how I applied it. But what I did here was I laid the house down. I applied the product on the wall that was flat against the surface of my table. And then I came straight up and did the top side of the wall. Um, well, I guess you know what I mean. You'll see here in a minute. Then I flipped it, rotated it once, so it was the adjacent wall, and again, applied the texture to the inside while it was laying flat on the table, and then directly on the top side, applied that, let it dry overnight. So now I have basically, if you consider having eight walls, I have four done, and now I need to do the other four. It's really two walls, but you get it inside and out. Now, for the product that I used, Sculpta Mold is a product that you can buy. Um, 
I talked about this when I was making the Chateau de Plumes base for the birdhouse. I made my own sculpta mold using a paper mache product that I have in a big bulk bag. I bought it from Amazon and it is called Sell You Clay. It's a great little paper mache product. I love having it. All you have to do to make your own DIY sculpt mold is mix 50-50 the cellu clay with um, plaster of Paris. You want to pour that in your bowl and I want to give you another tip. Only mix what you can do in about 20 minutes because this stuff starts hardening pretty quickly. You want to add water until you get to the point of it's like kind of cottage cheese. Now you may have noticed while I was talking I was brushing something around the windows. That was more Mod Podge because the day before I was having a hard time getting the product to stick to those little bitty pieces in the window uh, frame, the window frame and then also the cutout part getting it to stick to that. What I ended up doing which you will see here and this is messy and I just used my hands there's no way I could use gloves that would have been an absolute total mess because you well it, your gloves would stick together your hands almost stick together as this stuff starts to dry but I took a little bit of it and I kind of just swirled and rubbed it all over the foam um, just to give it some additional tooth and then you just start applying it pat 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 here you can see I'm swirling over the board to try to give me some tooth and by the time I get to the bottom that what I've swirled on is already dry and it's much easier to apply you have to work fairly quickly it gets to a point where uh, when you start patting it you'll notice it's really sticking and then you can kind of take your fingers and rub up and down and across to smooth it out. This is a product that you can sand, but the smoother that you can get it initially, it's going to be a whole lot easier.
When I said this sculpt mold mixture that I use dries really hard, I wasn't kidding. Uh, I ended up having to use my battery powered sander there to try to smooth it out and around the little windows and the door. Um, I not only had to use little pieces of sandpaper, but you'll see when I get it back down to the basement, I also had to use, I forgot what they're called, but they're little metal file type things. This does make a huge dusty mess. So if you try this, make sure to wear a mask. Eye protection helps too. Keep the dust out of your eyeballs. And another safety thing I wanted to mention that I hadn't before is that when this stuff is wet and you know it's in your bowl and all over your hands, do not clean those things in your drain. You don't want that going down your drain. You need to clean it outside and just dump it on the ground. After I got all this sanded, um, I took it outside and used a, a brush and brush, brush, brushed all that dust off because I want my paint to be able to stick and it took a lot of brushing because this is a very fine dust. When I was ready to paint, I wet the, the brush with water um, and then applied paint. I am going to be decoupaging so I need a light color and the color I chose to use was Dixie Belle's drop cloth. That paint is really thick, so I that's why I was adding a lot of water. It didn't take it long to dry at all. That product sucks up the paint. If you don't want to use your chalk paint or expensive chalk paint, you could also just use gesso. But I have the drop cloth and I wanted the inside of the house it's going to just remain plaster looking and I didn't want it to be stark white so that's why I used drop cloth. Now it's time to apply my decoupage paper which is a beautiful landscape piece from Roy Cycled decoupage papers. I'm using Mod Podge for this uh, mostly because Mod Podge works just fine and it's a whole lot cheaper and this is a big project so I don't want to use up my other uh, decoupage medium that I usually use. Now I'm going to say something here. Be smarter than me. I had made this box before I had received my paper but I knew the paper size was 20 by 30. Okay well 4 goes into 37 times you know, that's 28 inches. So that's why I made my box 7 by 7. However, I knew it wasn't going to be an exact square because when I, I cut one of the fronts out of the foam core board, when I was starting to cut the side, I already had it taped down and I went, oh, this is going to add a quarter of an inch. Well, actually a half inch because the foam core was being in, glued inside the front and the back piece and I was cutting it at seven. Well, that add, you have to add the thickness of your foam core, which was a quarter of an inch. So each side is seven and a half inches. The front and backs are seven. So that made it up to 29 inches all the way around the circumference of the house. And I thought, well, I'll still be okay. My paper's 30, uh, no because I also added that texture. Now it's shocking to me that that texture made that much difference because it, it, it was thick, but it wasn't that thick. Maybe the paper wasn't quite 30 inches, I don't know. But point being, I thought I was gonna be able to just slap this decoupage paper on there all four sides. No, because I was about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch shy. Okay, well I knew what that meant. It meant that I was going to have to paint the corners somewhere. And to make it even looking, I ended up having to cut the back uh, away 
and centering it so that I had a gap on both sides where I was gonna, I knew I was gonna have to add paints to blend all that in, which is a pain, but doable. And then another issue uh, on the ends of the paper in terms of color don't match. So where those two were also connected on the last side of the house, again, I'm going to have to add some paint. But this whole thing is going to be aged. I'm also going to have stamps on there so I can make this work. In the end, I'll probably apply a crackle because I love crackle. And also, I'm not too worried about the roof of the house. It's, it's going to look really patchworky when you watch me decoupage this. But I just wanted to go ahead and get some of that sky blue paper on there because I'm going to be adding something else for the roof. It will be decoupaged, but it will be decoupaged onto something before I glue it down. So, here's the process. And you'll also see me uh, try to help fill in on the back of the house on those corners the paper that I cut away from the windows I use that kind of patchwork stuff in just to help me a little bit more uh, when I have to blend the paint there so I guess the bottom line is don't be like me if you try this project make your house a little bit smaller and probably wait until you get your decoupage paper to make sure that you're going to just be able to wrap it all the way around. Thank you. 
decoupage paper needs to be coated on the top as well as when you're applying the glue to lay it down. Most of the time, I do both at the same time. I lay the glue down, put the paper down, and then put the glue on top, let it dry. I did not do that with this house because I was needing to hold it to decoupage all four sides. So this is the state we're at right now. Here was, here's the back wall where I added some of the pieces and painted in. It seems to have dried out pretty well. Fairly good enough match, I think, especially because there's a lot more going on top of this. And then here's this side where the papers didn't quite match in color. Now I've gone around all four sides and checked to make sure that everything is glued down well, but is it this side? I found some loose paper. Oh yeah, okay, it's just a little bit right in here. You. You probably can't see it move when I rub my finger across it, but I can see it. I want that glued down. Now, I have shown this before in the past. What I do when I have loose paper, I put a little bit of my adhesive, decoupage adhesive. This is Mod Podge. I'm going to use a syringe. And You've got to get that glue watery enough where it will go through the syringe. So what I do Barely poke and slowly shoot the glue up in there. Lightly press that down. That syringe hole is really totally invisible. The other thing though about this, be sure to rinse it out or your syringe won't work anymore. store it away and hope to never have to use it again. Okay, before I coat this thing, I want to measure my roof. As I mentioned earlier, something is going to go on top of this. So, about a quarter of an inch. So this is seven and a half, I'm gonna go with eight. So six by eight. Now I can use Mod Podge. Uh, I can use just a clear coat, which I think is what I'm gonna do. So just Dixie Belle satin clear coat. When I get this done, while it's drying, I will start working on my roof. <laughs> 